What's up, guys? I'm Tanner Gilmartin, alongside Max Gritzel, and this week, we're coming a little early. The Eagles faced off against the New York Giants last night in Thursday Night Football, as the Eagles just barely got away with a win, 22-21. And if you switched through channels and missed some of the game to watch the, I'll say, interesting debate last night, we have you covered with a full recap of the game. So let's get into it. Carson Wentz. He goes 25 of 43, 359 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. And Daniel Jones, 20 of 30, 187 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. Richard Rodgers was actually the um, most successful receiver for the Eagles in this game. Six catches, 85 yards, with Fulgham underneath, five catches, 73 yards. Ward had five catches, 42 yards, and a touchdown with Boston Scott's three catches, 46 yards, and his game-winning touchdown as well. Max, what did you like seeing this game? Well, I just I think Carson Wentz overall played uh, a pretty decent game, very inconsistent, but again, did enough to get the job done in one. Uh, I like the fact that he targeted Travis Fulgham a decent amount in this one, 11 times. You know, we – we know that he's our probably our best receiver at this point. I know Deshaun Jackson came back for a little bit before he got hurt, but I like the fact that he went to Fulgham a lot. I like the fact that we ran or at least tried to run the football. You know, Boston Scott got it 12 times. Wentz even ran seven times. And Corey Clement, I would have liked to have seen him get more than two carries, but it is what it is. I like the fact that we tried to run the football. And uh, overall, a dub's a dub, but uh, you definitely like it to be more than just by one point on the last drive of the game. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. For maybe a week or so, I, I did step off the Wentz wagon. But after these last couple of games, I can't blame this on Wentz. And I don't know what you feel about it, but I know earlier we were talking about a Carson Wentz trade, getting rid of him. But I just don't think that's the answer at this point in time. What do you think about that? Yeah, no, I have, I have to agree with you. I'm not completely sold that Wentz is – still the future here he definitely played really bad in the second and third quarters last night and he had that great pass to Boston Scott so with all the adrenaline and uh, momentum that we have now you might forget about the second and third quarters where he played really poorly so I just want everybody to remember like don't forget about those two quarters where he played bad so you gotta you gotta kind of keep it even I know that he had a great final drive there but overall he outplayed Daniel Jones, and again, we beat the Giants at home. You know, this is a game we're supposed to win. Don't get too high over a win against the Giants. I know we got a W, and that's all that matters. But again, you definitely want to see him be more consistent because there's times where he looks like one of the best quarterbacks in the league, and then there's times he looks like one of the worst quarterbacks in the league. An example would be that terrible interception right before the half. We could have just taken a field goal and gotten points, but he's trying to force it in a window that's really closed and it gets intercepted in the end zone. So just a lot of stuff he has to clean up still. Yeah, what I did like in this game was the fight that this team clearly showed. They had Jason Kelsey, for one. He's just pushing and fighting for this team. Um, every down he's out there, He is, which was the whole game he was out there. Uh, he did have that face mask uh, where he actually took the guy's helmet off. But it's just he. you can see he's really struggling through um, – through, I don't know if he has an injury or something, but he just did not look good for um, the beginning of that game um, physically with his his health. But then you have standout guys, like I hate to mention this, but Nathan Gary, he had a pretty productive game last night. And Alex Singleton, who was making his presence known uh, towards the end of this game and just how the supporting cast sort of built around this team, which they usually do. In tough situations like this, you have guys like Boston Scott, as we mentioned, getting the winning touchdown, stepping up. And then Fulgham, Ward, knowing their role on this offense and knowing that they need to get those catches and they need to get things done. What player really was a highlight for you? Listen, I'll I'll say this to start with, Deshaun Jackson coming out firing on all cylinders in that opening drive. I mean, Wentz was really targeting him and peppering him with those passes. He looked pretty solid. I think we shot away from him as the game went on, and then he gets hurt uh, late in the fourth quarter, which you don't want to see because now he's probably going to be out for multiple weeks. But I like the fact that when Deshaun came back there early on and he was was getting involved a ton, which was great, playing Johnson, I'll say. He's trying to fight through his injuries, but I think he sprained his MCL last night, which 
<laughs> he's going to keep him out for a few weeks as well. So, again, the offensive line is banged up. You make a good point by Travis Kels – or, excuse me, Jason Kelsey, uh, really stepping up and fighting for this team. Uh, I want to highlight Jordan Maialata. I think he's stepped into that left tackle position pretty pretty well with Jason Peters out and Andre Dillard out for the season as well. So I think overall there wasn't really one guy last night where you could point to and really carry the team. I think it was a team effort. Uh, as far as Nathan Gary goes, I'm not off of the uh, – he's not off of my list. He's still on my list, I guess you could say. I, after that Tyler Higby game, I think it's going to be pretty tough to uh, to get back on the good side here. But, again, yeah, he, he had a couple big plays. That sack on Daniel Jones he had last night was a big one. Yeah. But overall, this team stepping up, uh, especially last night when they needed to, and it's a team effort right now because, listen, you want to say that Carson Wentz is the real deal and he's getting out of his funk early on in the season. But overall, Travis fulgham has been a key part of this offense recently too, so it's a real collective effort. Yeah, most certainly. And one thing that I did notice that this team – for weeks and weeks, just keep struggling with not capitalizing off of the defense's effort. You see, you saw that play where Fletcher Cox, I believe, took down and the ball was fumbled. And we got the ball back at the end of the second um, quarter and we just did nothing with it. Uh, and that's really what hurts us going into these games and especially against a New York Giants team where you know their defense is a little better this season and that you can't afford to make these simple uh, you can't leave points on the board. You you can't. Of course. And you need to, as I mentioned, capitalize. And that is what this team doesn't do. Jake Elliott misses that 29-yard field goal. And now we're all scratching our heads wondering if Jake Elliott is not the same anymore. And I know people were suggesting cutting him. But if you cut Jake Elliott, that's $7.9 million of dead cap space. Yeah, you can't do that right now. You don't want to mess your cap space up even more, especially going into next season. We know our cap space situation is not in good hands right now. But overall, I think there's more to not like than to like in last night's game. You got to remember, we're down, what, 21-16 with four to four to five minutes left in that game. Overall, down 21-10 to 10 at one point. I mean, we were really shooting ourselves in the foot. And I got to say this, the Giants really didn't play that poorly. They just made some really bad mistakes Daniel Jones tripping over himself. I mean, that was pretty ridiculous. Yeah. One of the crazier things I've seen in football memory, uh, for me at least. But then you have Evan Ingram right off his hands. That could have really sealed the game for the Giants there in the fourth quarter if he was able to haul that one in. Wasn't able to. Overall, Wayne Gallman stepped in for an injured Devontae Freeman and played pretty well. Daniel Jones didn't have a bad game last night. I mean, he takes care of the football. I know he had an interception, but overall he didn't play too bad. I think uh, getting Sterling Shepard back really helped him. We weren't able to really contain him. Six catches for 59 yards on the night. Uh, I will say Darius Slate played great defense on the Giants' number one receiver, Darius Slayton, and he wasn't able to do much. Two catches for 23 yards. So, overall, the defense still has their, their flaws. But I got I to gotta say that I want people to remember that we were losing this football game 21-10 to 10 at one point. And even though that last drive was great from Wentz, yeah, Jake Elliott – is, is now what? He missed three of his last four field goal attempts. It, it, there's a lot of sloppy play. I'm just, we're, we're all just happy and lucky to get, it, to get out of there with a W and move on to the, to the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, definitely happy to get out with the W, but not really happy how it happened. And you mentioned how we were trailing in this game to the Giants. In the first half, Carson threw 26 passes, uh, 171 yards, and he was at some points forcing that ball a little too much. Uh, sometimes just overthrowing it, making weird decisions. And then we go the other side. Daniel Jones only throws uh, 12 passes. He completes seven of them for 102 yards. He does throw that that um, a touchdown, and he has an interception mm-hmm. just as well as Winston in the first half. But for some reason, Daniel Jones was the leading rusher in this game with the most yards, I should say. He had 92 rushing yards. Mm-hmm. And it was, I guess, the Eagles hired the invisible man to take him down when he, when he was home free to the end zone, but he, they end up scoring anyway. So it's just yeah. letting the Giants, after scoring that opening drive, letting the Giants get the next three straight touchdowns, it's just – it can't happen, and they really need to look over the game plan. Yeah, I will say that uh, – listen, Daniel Jones, I think he had more opportunities to do that uh, to do that read option. I think it, it was there for him. Uh, we really didn't cover that well. And on that one play, you saw he was able to explode for like 80-plus yards on that run. Uh, but I want to highlight 
Travion LeBlanc. I think he had a horrible game, uh, especially that that he tried this. He tries to strip Golden Tate that ball instead of tackle him. I mean, you got to just wrap him up there, and that could have been momentum builder for them, and it, it kind of was in a way, I guess. But they still lost. But yeah, I, there's there's definitely holes all over this team, and then I guess what I want to tell the people is just don't get too high over this one win. I know we got a W, and I know we have the Dallas Cowboys next, and the division terrible. But overall, it's about winning playoff games. It's about like, getting to the Super Bowl. I don't want people to get distracted because I know that we're in first place. But overall, this isn't a good football team, and there definitely needs to be some changes. Even from the coaching standpoint, you saw Doug Peterson try to throw that fade to that guy, Hakeem Butler, who hasn't had a single catch in the NFL's whole career, and he wants to, what, throw it to him in, the, in a key situation as a, what, a jump ball type of deal? I just think that was a horrible play call. And, uh, you know, Jake Elliott, again, missing those field goals and a 29-yard chip shot, it just can't happen. Uh, I thought Doug Peterson should have kicked a field goal with Jake Elliott instead of go for it a few times. I think it happened once or twice throughout the game. So there's a lot of sloppiness. But listen, man, first place is first place. Yeah, first place at 2-4-1. and one. It's just a brutal record. Uh, the Giants are right under us. And that brings us into our next matchup against the, the Cowboys who are right under us. And they had last week a matchup against the Cardinals. They lost 38-10, and they're going to look back. They're going to look to uh, bounce back against this Washington football team. But what we saw in this Arizona Cardinals game is that Ezekiel Elliott he fumbled. He golfed up the ball two times in a row, and that's something that I'm sure that he's going to work on. But it's also something maybe something that we can delve into. What do you think's happening with this Cowboys team? Yeah, I mean, listen, you lose your leader in Dak Prescott, uh, it's never good. Any quarter, any team losing their quarterback, they're in for, uh, you know, a decline in production overall. But Ezekiel Elliott, I mean, listen, you're still talking about one of the best running backs in football. I think it's a more of a mental game for him. Maybe he's putting too much pressure on himself to carry this Cowboys team. Andy Dalton is not as bad as what he showed on Monday night. Uh, I know it was a horrible performance, and the Cowboys really got shellacked at home. But – Listen, this is a big-time matchup, uh, another division game. So we have time to rest, which is key. Hopefully get some guys back um, over the extended period of time that we have off. And listen, hopefully Dallas can add another loss to that to the L column this weekend. We'll see. But, you know, you, ha you have to be just excited that we're still in this and that the Cowboys aren't exploding and, you know, have, what, four or five wins already. So the Washington football team – is another team that I know no one wants to hear about. But overall, listen, Ron Rivera is a good coach. Um, Terry McLaurin's a good receiver. They have, they have pieces, is my point. So it's going to be wide open the whole season long. And hopefully people, again, just re remember, we were losing this football game. You know, it wasn't pretty. I know we got the W, but you got you to gotta be realistic about the situation at all times. Yeah, to me, it's, it's almost as if it would be dangerous if the Cowboys lose this matchup and then they're going into a matchup yeah, against yeah. us in prime time. And, uh, you know, you, you can't, you can never hope for a Cowboys win. And I'm not saying that at all, Definitely not. but I'm just hoping that they don't have much momentum. Maybe it's a close game against this Washington team and it really takes the energy out of them. Maybe they go into overtime because they have to play a prime time game. As I mentioned, yeah. back at the link Sunday night, there's going to be fans and that's, that's going to play a major factor in this game, I think. And I'm hoping that all the, uh, the, the couple thousand, I believe, fans that will be there, um, they really bring it because this is still a must-win game, definitely, with them right behind yeah. us in this dumpster fire of a division. And, yeah, that's what we, we really have to, to excel on taking advantage of the Cowboys' mistakes. What do you think is the main thing? that this team needs to do? Is it the offense that needs to work or is it the defense? Defense, 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 definitely. I think you got to get turnovers. I think the offense is okay, right? There's, there's spurts where Wentz looks really great and he's moving the ball downfield. There's other times where he can't get anything going. We saw that in the Ravens game where Wentz sputtered. We had to pump multiple times even last night. There was drives where it was three and out, three and out. So the defense needs to get a turnover or two and uh, get plus field position for us. I think that's probably going to be our – our go-to situation every week because overall we don't have the firepower on offense to just, you know, boat race these teams. And that's going to wrap up our show this week, guys, as we mentioned, 
We're facing the Dallas Cowboys next Sunday night at the link. So we'll be back Monday to recap that hopeful win. And thanks for tuning in.